When a replacement camera is released, you expect it to have some significant differences. Hi, I'm Matt Grayson, and today for ePhotozine.tv, I'm looking at the Sony Alpha A200 to find out exactly why it's one of the most confusing cameras around. So what have Sony done to it that's made it so confusing? Well, they haven't done that much, and that's just the point. They've enlarged the screen, they've taken a dial away, added a few buttons, and also increased the ISO sensitivity from 1600 to 3200, but that's about it. Oh, and not to mention that they've changed the battery, so now if you've got an A100, you can't use it in this. Looking around the main body of the camera, you'll notice straight away that one of the dials on the top plate is missing, and that's the function dial that used to be on the left shoulder. That's now been replaced by the mode dial, which was on the other side of the hot shoe. The function dial has been given its own dedicated button now on the back of the camera just above the navigation pad. And this is to still access your different metering modes, uh, your focusing modes, the D-range optimizer uh, that you'll see in use when we go on our location shoot with the A200. The mode dial, which is on the back, is for accessing things like your program mode, aperture shutter priority and manual, as well as your scene modes, and auto for if you just want to point and shoot if it all gets too much for you. On the other side where the mode dial used to be is your drive button for self-timer and uh, con continuous shooting, as well as a dedicated ISO button. Now that's going to be a great help to you if you're, say for instance, you're, you're at, the, on a, at a day at the beach, you're taking pictures in the nice bright sunlight, suddenly you come across a cave, you want to go in there, you haven't got a funny around messing around going into, the, um, going into the menu system, you just hit the button, select a higher ISO and you're away to go. You can do that by accessing, by rotating the wheel just in front of the shutter release button there. That also acts as uh, the shutter speed or aperture uh, changer when you're in aperture or shutter priority or in manual. In manual, it will automatically default to the shutter speed. So to access and change the aperture, you hit the AV button on the back there, hold that down and then move the wheel and that will change the aperture for you. When you're in shutter or aperture priority, that acts as your exposure compensation button to add a little bit of extra light or drop a little bit down. As I said, the function button on the right here will take you into the different modes here. So you've got your flash mode, your autofocus mode, white balance, metering mode, AF area and D-range optimizer. We'll go into more detail of those when we go out on location in the field. On the back on the screen here, you'll notice that this is all laid out really nicely for you. You've got which mode you're in there, so at the moment we're in manual. We've got the shutter speed and the aperture. We've got what flash mode we're in. Obviously this flashes off because the pop-up flashes down. And uh, what exposure compensation we're on. We're on plus two at the moment. ISO rating is 100 and we're on DR plus, which is the D-range optimizer. If I go down to there, it'll say there we're in DR plus, which is the advanced mode. If I switch that to off, it's then gone blank. We've got the battery telling us there we've only got 4% of battery life left. We're in fine, large um, image quality size, and here, if I had a card in, it would tell us how many photographs we've got available on the card that's in there at the moment. Down here, you've got your basic options to hit your menu, your display, your delete button, and your playback to view all the images you've already taken. Now, going into the playback mode can be quite annoying. What they've done is they've changed the menu system, so now it'll bring up your image and then bring five small thumbnails just above the picture which will show you all the previous five photographs. So you can see it's a bit like a preview mode for your next photographs. It's a nice touch until you start to want to delete photographs. If you delete a photograph that's shown on the large one, you've then got to wait for the next picture to come up and then wait for the other five to load in, which it sounds a bit picky, but can take a little bit of time. So you may find that quite disconcerting. We're now gonna go out into the field with the A200 to see exactly what results it can produce. We're here in Clifton Park in, uh, well, Clifton in Rotherham, and uh, we're testing the Sony A200 entry level camera. And uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to try the D range optimizer. Now I've got my scene framed up, ready to go. Uh, it's just a, a few trees in the distance with an, an approach of uh, grassland. And uh, we're going to take three images one with the D range optimizer off, uh, one with the optimizer on, and one in the advanced mode. Uh, which uses uh, selected area, areas of the image and uh, optimizes it from that. Um, the standard one will take a, a, an analysis of the entire area and work it out from there. So you should see slight variations on each image, which I'll show on the video uh, as we progress. Uh, so I've got the thing switched on. We need to go to function 
um, say OK on the D-range optimizer. We choose off to make sure that's on. And there we choose our self timer and we'll just let that go. So that's our shot taken. We're now going to go back into function to choose the optimizer again. Go on to which is called what's called DR, which is the standard. And we're going to again shoot the self timer to make sure the image is as stable as possible. What I've done for this, I've lowered the tripod right down, spread the legs out um, to give more stability because we're quite, and also lets me get a little bit closer to the ground. You'll find most tripods have this feature um, on this Velbon model that I've got here. It's just these little catches here we pull up and that allows the legs to come out, spread out a little bit further. Watch out for your sensing column though, that will limit how far you can actually get to the ground. That's that one taken, so we'll go back into function again onto DR plus, which is the advanced, and we'll set to shoot again. Now I've set this shot to F16, which is a decent one for good depth of field to get most things in focus. So you find you won't really have a problem on a tripod at F16. Obviously ISO 100 to get nice smooth shots. And that is running at, just bring the, That's run at 0.4 of a second in this quite dark area. It's quite a bright day today as well, so uh, that's a surprise. We must be really sheltered with it. Mind you, we've got some large trees just over us right now. So we moved out into the sun um, to try and get, well, saw these uh, lovely pink flowers here on this bush. I uh, thought we'd get uh, get a shot using the different picture styles that the Sony A200 has. Um, now that can be found by going into the menu system. Into the main menu, go into the shooting mode, which is uh, signified by the camera icon. Moving down to creative style, and then choosing from either standard, vivid, portrait, landscape, night, sunset, black and white, and there's even an Adobe setting, which is pretty cool. We're gonna use the uh, vivid one for this shot uh, to really punch out the colors. Um, so I've set that there. I've got my AF set to <coughs> excuse me. I've got my AF set to um, local. Uh, I've already composed the shot, and uh, I'll need to refocus just to make sure that it's on there. And I've also set the focus to 3.5 to make sure everything's all nicely blurred out to focus, and we're just focusing on the the main subject, which is this portion of flowers here. Let's go for that. Lovely. Beautiful. Whilst I've been walking around the park, um, we've come across this uh, small garden area here called the Lavender Garden. Uh, it's got this uh, sun dahlia that's been knocked over, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to take a shot of it now though, building on what we were saying about before about the creative styles. Uh, when you go into those, you can actually go into them and adjust things like the contrast, sharpness, saturation. Uh, so we're going to um, go into the menu system again, down to the creative style. I'm going to choose standard on this one and if you press the left and right buttons, it allows you to go into the uh, contrast sharpness like I just mentioned. And um, we're going to push the contrast up and that's ready to go. I've stuck it on a self timer again, uh, 10 seconds. ISO 100, F18, because I've got a profile of the whole sundial that's fallen over there. And um, I've also put it on um, 0.7 of a stop under exposure just to bring out a little bit more detail so it's not too blown out. We'll just uh, wait for that to count down there. Noticing on the screen there is also the infolithium telling me exactly how much battery life I've got left, which is not a great deal on this, on this uh, battery at the moment. There we go, that's taken. So we'll see how that looks when we get into the lab. <laughs> 